When you visit a new place like Copenhagen, there's this balance of wanting to see all the famous tourist attractions, but also finding the hidden gems and trying to see the city a bit like a local. So I think the best of both worlds is to ask a local friend if you had to show someone around the city for a few days, where would you take them? And I'm gonna be that friend for you. My name is Adam and I like to travel and make videos. And today I'm gonna show you how to travel Copenhagen like a local. Copenhagen is the capital of Denmark and is home to around 650,000 people. And the first travel tip I'll give you today is about when you should visit. If you can, aim for May through September. Copenhagen is just a completely different city during the warmer months. And I'll be honest, the city can be a bit sad, gray and cold the rest of the year. But I also think that's part of what makes those few warm months extra special here as we've been in the cold darkness for so many months. Now, December can also be quite nice though, if you're looking for a beautiful Christmas vibe. Pretty much everyone here speaks great English and you can pay with your credit card everywhere. No real need to take out any cash. Now, you should probably rent a bicycle. It's the way to get around in Copenhagen. I mean, I think I'm like, what, 28 and I have never had a car. I just don't need it. It's really easy to get around the city, just walking or biking or using public transportation. I mean, in general, public tra transportation here is fantastic. And if you want to save a little bit of money on accommodation, you can just stay a little bit outside the city, near a train station, and then you can quickly and easily get to the city. So we want to do things a bit like the locals do, so renting a bike it is. But just make sure you read up on the rules and how to actually drive a bike here in Copenhagen. Because us locals, we hate when tourists stop in the middle of the street because they see something amazing or just get lost. So the first place we'll bike today is located in Frederiksberg. And Frederiksberg is actually its own municipality within the city of Copenhagen. But we'll start here because this is where I live. But it's also just such a nice area and I don't think that too many tourists actually come here as there are not really that many of the well-known tourist attractions here. So first we'll head to Frederiksberg Garden. A lot of locals, including myself, come here for a walk, a run or just to sit and hang out with friends. It's also located right next to the zoo and from inside the gardens you can actually get a completely free view of the elephants. Here in the garden is also this beautiful castle, the Frederiksberg Castle, which used to be a summer residence for the royal family, but now it is a school for officers in the Danish army. Exiting the gardens on the east side, our next stop is to head down Frederiksberg Allee, which is basically a large avenue that connects the gardens and the castle to the city center of Copenhagen. This is probably my favorite street in all of Copenhagen. It gives some real Parisian vibes. And a little fun fact about this road or avenue is that when it was built about 300 years ago, it was built to connect Copenhagen to the king's new summer residence, the Frederiksberg castle that we just visited. And for many years, the whole road was locked off so only the king and his court could use it, which I find kind of funny. Now it's a pretty expensive residential area. There's also a bunch of theaters here and quite a few restaurants. Now, finding a place around here to have lunch could be a pretty great idea. I'll instead show you what you should be ordering for lunch here in Copenhagen. Well, in Denmark in general. But instead of going to a restaurant and actually ordering it myself, I will now go home and make it myself. All right, so I've made it back home. And the dish that I recommend you try while here in Denmark is called smørbrød. It's basically rye bread with stuff on top. Let me explain. So this is actually what I have been eating for lunch pretty much my entire life. Now, I don't suggest that you go and make smørbrød yourself at your hotel or wherever you're staying. But at least you, you'll get an idea of what it is. And again, how the locals do it. So we're basically just putting on some kind of butter here, baked cheese, some salami. Now with the salami, you'll want to put remoulade. And what I suggest that you do is to go out and find a great smørbrød restaurant. So basically a restaurant that specializes in making this. Then it'll look a bit more like this. 
and it'll be a lot more delicious. What I got here is the budget version. So I'll enjoy my lunch and after that we'll head towards the city center. I'll park the bike here at Rådhusplassen, the city hall square, as it's a pretty centrally located spot from where we can easily reach all the other attractions. And well from here, we'll just start walking. Now the first thing to do here is really just to wander the streets and get a little bit lost and check out all the beautiful buildings and great shops. When you get lost down the gorgeous streets and alleyways, you might come across a place like this, one of Copenhagen's oldest stores, a tea shop which opened all the way back in 1835. When we're done window shopping, it's time to head over to Gammelstrand to get our first glimpse of the Copenhagen canals. There's always a lot going on here, and if you look below the water, you might be able to spot the underwater statue, Aunide and the Merman. opposite side of the canal you can't help but notice the enormous Christiansborg palace. It was home to the royal family for 800 years but now it houses the Danish parliament. You can buy a ticket and tour around the old rooms and get a real sense of the royal history. Easy to miss but worth a visit is Bibliothekshaven which sits quietly just around the corner from Christiansborg palace. It's a beautiful and calm garden where you can catch your breath after all the walking we've already been doing. And if you have your bicycle, it's really easy to get between all of these locations here. And the same with public transportation, you can easily get to places that are very close by. And if you want to get in your 10,000 steps, it's also very possible to just walk between all of these places here. No trip to Copenhagen would be complete without a visit to the picturesque Nyhavn. The colorful buildings date all the way back to around the 1680s when the harbor was busy with sailors and traders. Now it's probably Copenhagen's biggest tourist magnet and it's a great place to grab something to eat or if you want to do like the locals, get a sandwich and a beer and enjoy the scenery sitting by the canal. If neither of those lunch options are for you, I might have what you need. Walk towards the end of Nyhavn on the right side of the canal and cross the bridge you see here. Once across, you'll get to this little area which is called Bruns Gadekøkken. And it's basically a small selection of great street food and drinks. Next, we'll head over to Ophelia Place, which is another great place to just chill out with a drink and relax. And it offers a great view of the Royal Danish Opera House. If we keep walking just a few minutes down by the water, we'll make it to Amalienborg Palace, which is the current home to the Danish royal family. One of the cool things to see here is the changing of the royal guard, which happens every day at around 11.30 or 12 a.m. Just behind Amalienborg sits the gorgeous Marmorkirken, the marble church. It's a beautiful church and you can freely enter and see the just as beautiful insides. Now from here, we are not that far away from the Little Mermaid, which, to be honest, I think is quite underwhelming. <laughs> but since it's really close, we might just have a look. And what is perhaps the most enjoyable is to watch all these other tourists trying to get as close as possible to this tiny statue. But it is worth coming out this way, because just around the corner from the Little Mermaid, we can head into Castello, or the Citadel. It's an old fortress that was a part of Copenhagen's defenses and now it houses military personnel and is well freely open to the public to enjoy the scenery and walk the banks. Not far from Castello we'll find Nybola. These rows of old yellow houses are pretty beautiful and they were constructed to house the Danish navy and army and well still to this day do just that. Our next stop is Kongens Hale, the King's Garden the oldest royal gardens in Denmark. Laid out in the 1600s, it's now a pretty popular place for a picnic. But we are here to check out Rosenborg Castle, which sits right beside it. You can enter the castle, which has a beautiful museum and is also home to the Danish crown jewels.
Right, I am getting hungry again, and this time we can go over and check out Torvhallerne. The best way I can describe this place is fancy street food. But you can also buy a lot of high quality foods and ingredients if you're looking to do a little cooking yourself. Not too far from here is the very creatively named The Lakes. They have a pretty interesting history with being basically a moat around the city of Copenhagen and they have also been used as water reservoirs for drinking water. Now though it's a place where people come to have a walk or a run or just to hang out and it's a lovely place to sit and just people watch. If you are in Copenhagen and the weather is nice, go and hang out by the canals. This particular spot is called Kalvebod Bølge and it always has a great vibe. Another activity which is practically a must do in Copenhagen is touring the canals by boat. These large canal boats is a popular way to do it, but I recommend having a look at these smaller boats that you can drive yourself. Go Boat is a popular company to go with or if you want the private tour, but with a captain, you can check out Hey Captain. Of course, we can't forget about Tivoli, the old amusement park in the middle of Copenhagen. Very much worth a visit if you have the time, as you can easily spend a whole day here. It can also really add up cost-wise, as the entrance alone is $22, and if you want a ride pass, That'll be around $38 on top of that. Expensive, but a really great experience. A visit to the part of Copenhagen called Christianshavn is also very much recommended. It almost has that same feeling as Nyhavn with the old colorful buildings, but it's a lot less busy. When you're near, you'll likely notice the beautiful spire that sits on top of the Church of Our Savior. It's really unique and if you're there you can pay around 10 US dollars to climb the spire and get a great view of the city. Another popular thing to do in Christianshavn is to visit the famous free town Christiania. It has a super fascinating history of being sort of an independent hippie community within the city of Copenhagen. I certainly recommend you learn more about Christiania if you're interested as I could easily fill a whole video just about this place. Right, thanks a lot for letting me show you around Copenhagen and uh, yeah, please let me know if you found this video helpful and uh, I guess the only thing that's left to say is that you should enjoy your trip to Copenhagen. See you in the next one.